Welcome to part two of my Asteroids Coding Challenge. Uh, if you watched the previous one, I, have, uh, I had a ship and I had asteroids, but no, pew, 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 lasers. So in this particular second part of the coding challenge, I'm gonna add the lasers, which hit the asteroids and break them up into small pieces. And don't forget, if you're interested in uh, machine learning, uh, after I finish this video, which I've already finished, I don't know, I've got some time travel thing going on, you can go to, uh, to the link in the description to Siraj's channel where he has, will have, at some point soon, a video where, that trains a bot to play my Asteroids game, okay? So enjoy part two of this Asteroids challenge. Okay, so let's see if we can manage to add that. Whew. So I'm gonna add a, another JavaScript file, call it laser.js. And here, what I want is, once again, I need a position. And I need a velocity. And I need an update function. I need all the same sort of things, which is uh, this.position.add this.velocity. And, so, and then I need a render function. And uh, I'm just going to draw it as a point. Um, this dot, oh, I don't, point, this, this dot x, this dot y, uh, and a stroke 255. I'm going to say stroke weight 4 to make it a little bit thicker. Um, and so now, if uh, what I need also now, just the same way I made the asteroids, I need, and you know what? Hmm. I'm tempted to put these in the ship object. Like the ship keeps tracks of its own lasers, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna make an array out here. So I'm gonna make an array, and I'm going to, uh, in draw, just like with the asteroids, I'm going to loop through all the lasers, the lasters, the lasers, and I'm gonna render and update them. It doesn't need an edges function. And now when do I create them? So I want, let's say I want to create them when I hit the space bar. So I don't know what the key code is for the space bar, but I can also just say if key equals space. So I can add to this key pressed function and I can say lasers.push new laser. Now here's the thing. Where should the laser start? Well, the laser, sh laser should start wherever the ship is. So I actually, in this case, want to pass something in to that laser constructor, and I want to pass ship.position. So I want to say create a laser where the ship is. So now if I go into that laser, I can receive an argument like uh, ship, ship, I can just call this pa uh, ship, s pause for like ship position, starting position, <laughs> and I can say create a vector spos.x, spos.y. So I'm copying, essentially, by making a new vector with the same x and y. And so now, if I refresh this and I hit space, okay, laser is not defined. <laughs> I'm not gonna ring the bell. Uh, I, uh, now what I need to do is make sure I have a reference also to laser.js. I added a new JavaScript file in my, uh, in my index.html file. My brain is melting. I've been doing this for too long. Okay, this is a long coding challenge. Okay, here we go. Let's see, spacebar. Oh, look at that. It changed the stroke weight of everything. That was kind of exciting. But, but uh, it did not. Um, I don't see any dots on the screen. So let's, let's have a look here. Let's look in the console for lasers. I definitely added a bunch, and their positions are on the screen. Why am I not seeing them? So a couple things. One is, uh, am I calling this.render? Sketch.js, am I calling this.render? Draw lasers, am I calling lasers.render? I am, lasers I dot render. Let's, uh, okay. And, oh, you know what I did wrong? This is like total nonsense. <laughs> this dot x and this dot y doesn't exist. What does the laser have? It has a position vector and a velocity vector. So this is this dot pause dot x and this dot pause dot y. And by the way, let's add the push and pop here so that stroke weight doesn't affect anything else. Whoops, and now I can hit, so you can see as I move it creates little dots 
where, where, the, uh, where the ship is. Now here's the thing. I want those dots to move and I want them to point in the direction of the ship itself. So in addition, when I make one of these laser objects, where did I do that? Right here. I not only need to make it the laser with the ship's position, but I should really pass in that heading as well. Right? I want to give it the angle because the angle is going to tell it which way should it be pointing when it creates a vector to start moving. So if I add ship.heading to the constructor, I can now say uh, that's an angle that I'm getting in the laser. I can say p5.vector from angle, angle. Now, did I call update in the main sketch? I don't want to make the same mistake. I did. So now we should have. Yeah, they're kind of slow, <laughs> but they do work. Look at that. This is fun. Okay, so first of all, they're coming out of the center, which is a little bit weird. I should probably make them come out of the front, but I could offset them. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I am going to make them move much faster, though, because that's ridiculously slow. So uh, I'm going to say this.velocity.multiply. I'm going to multiply it by like 10, so they're 10 times as fast. That's really fast. And you know, I could do a little trick. I bet you won't notice if with the ship, if I actually set, when I draw the ship, instead of no fill, if I set its fill to zero, so I give it a black fill, it's actually going to cover over the lasers. As long as in sketch.js, mi, 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 <laughs> where every, I, I, I need to make sure the ship is drawn after the lasers so that it covers them. Now we should see, yeah, that looks a little bit better. So now all I need to do is figure out when the lasers hit those asteroids. And when they hit the asteroids, I need the asteroids to break apart. Ooh, this is exciting. <laughs> um, okay, here we, just, here we go. So, ah, oh boy, so many features. I think this might be the last feature I'm going to do. So I, need, I do need some kind of collision detection here. Um, so how do I do that? Well, here is a loop where I'm, oh, here's a loop where I am looping over all the asteroids. Here's a loop where I'm looping over all the lasers. I need to check every single laser against every single asteroid, right? I need to do something like if lasers index I hits asteroids index J, right? For every laser I, check every single asteroid. Hmm. Now, here's the thing I need another loop. So I need my asteroids loop inside, inside the lasers loop. Oh, and this should be J. I can't use I for both loops. Otherwise, my program will get wildly confused. So now I'm saying, now, hits is not some automatic function that just exists. I almost want to just like run this code and it'll work. I'm writing out the code again to tell me what I need to put into my objects. If I was using some kind of game programming framework or library, there's one for P5 called P5.play. It might have collision detection built into it, but I'm just going to do something simple here myself. Lasers index I hits asteroids index J. So that means in the laser object, I need a function called hits that expects an asteroid object. So I go to laser and I say this, this dot hits equals function uh, asteroid. And then now, how do I determine if the two things are colliding? Well, there's an actually an easy way for me to do this because what I have is I have a like circular-like thing and I have a dot. So if this was a perfect circle, I could just determine is the dot, is the distance from the dot to the center less than the radius or greater than the radius? If it's greater than the radius, it's outside. If it's less than the radius, it's inside. And you know, it's going to be slightly off for some of these jaggedy edges, but it all happens so fast, I bet no one will notice. <laughs> you could do like complex, elaborate polygon thing yourself if you want, and write it in the comments and send me your corrections. OK, so now I want to say var d equals distance, which is a p5 function, between this dot pos dot x, this dot pos dot y, and the asteroid dot pos dot x, asteroid pos dot y. So I want the distance between the positions x, y, and the asteroids, the, 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 the uh, lasers x, y, and the asteroids x, y. If the distance is less than 
this dot r plus asteroid dot r. This, oh, no, no, this, this doesn't have an r. Just the asteroids are. If the distance is less than the asteroid's radius, then, uh, then it's colliding. Hit. So I'm just going to, um, and I'm going to just console log hit for a second and see if this works. Come on, hit. No, I don't. Oh, ah, hmm. <laughs> is it actually working and I'm just losing my, oh, it is working. I think it's been working all along. I just like didn't actually hit any of them. So you can see it's working. Sorry, everybody. So the whole point of what I wanted to do here, I'm not sure if some of that should have gotten edited out or not, but it's working now. It has been working. I just didn't have the console log in the right place or something. Ooh. Um, so what I actually want to do, if you look at my sketch.js, is that if the laser hit, I, this is an if statement. So I want that to evaluate to true or false. So uh, what I want to do is return true if that's the case. Now, this is another thing. I could actually just return the result of d less than asteroid dot r, but I like to be annoying and write extra code when I don't need to. And also, I just think for sort of teaching purposes, it sort of sometimes it makes it a little more readable to see the whole thing written out. Because what I'm doing is I'm returning true or false based on whether the distance is in that threshold or not. So if it is within that threshold, what do I need to do? I need to do a couple things. Uh, in sketch.js, I need to say, asteroids index j like break up. So what happens in the game asteroids? When your laser hits the asteroid, it like breaks into two smaller asteroids. So how am I going to do that? Ooh, this is tricky, tricky, tricky. Boy, this is not as easy as I thought. Okay, so first of all, one thing I need to do is I want to, I think the way to do this is to remove, remember I have an array of asteroids. So I want to remove the bigger asteroid from the array and add two smaller ones in the same spot. So what I can do is I can maybe have this function break up new asteroids, return two new asteroids that are smaller but look the same. Uh, and then what I can do is I can say asteroids dot push new asteroids. So it's going to add, and then what I want to do is say astro uh, asteroids dot splice i comma one. Oops. So by the way, I'm using the wrong index here. I goes with lasers. J goes with asteroids. So this has to be J. And this has to be J as well. OK? So, uh, buh, 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 buh. so now, this should work. There's some issues here. First of all, I have to write this function breakup that generates two new asteroids. So this won't work. Let's do that first. So I need to go to the asteroid object. And I need to write a function called this dot breakup equals function. And I'm going to say uh, var um, ast new a for new asteroids is an empty array. So what I need to do is I basically need to create two new asteroids at this particular location. So this is an issue. Like the asteroids constructor function can, uh, does not receive any arguments. I want it to, if it doesn't receive an argument, create an asteroid at a random location. If it does receive an argument, create an asteroid at a specific location. So I'm going to add an argument pause here, and I'm going to say this.pause equals pause, uh, let's see, hmm. I'm, I'm just going to say right now if pause, this.pause equals pause. There, I could be more efficient about this with like an, an or kind of in the statement, but just, so what I want to say is if this constructor re received an argument, set its position to that position. Otherwise, make a random position. Here's the problem though. I don't want to just set the vectors equal to each other because they're objects and they will both actually point to the same object and things won't move properly. So I need to make sure I copy this vector when I bring it in. So this will create the asteroids at that location. Now, there's a bunch more things I need to add here, but let's just see how that does. Um, OK, so and then, um, so what I need to do here is say new a index 0 equals um, a new asteroid at this one's position, and then a second one, 
also at this one's position, and then return those two. So this should now give me two new asteroids whenever I hit one of them. Okay, cannot read property X of undefined. Laser dot, I bet you I'm missing a this or a pause. Laser.js line 18. Uh, Laser.js line 18. Uh, whoa, whoa. X of undefined, oh, okay. There's a big problem here, which is that I'm looping through the asteroids and adding new asteroids at the same time. So uh, that's really a big problem because I don't, I'm gonna like, I'm adding some asteroids, then I'm gonna check those, and I might add some more asteroids, then I'm gonna check those. So I really need to loop through the array backwards so that when I add stuff, I don't check them again. So I'm gonna start the loop at asteroids.length minus one, go all the way to j is greater than or greater than or equal to zero, and j minus minus, okay? So that should help. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually not gonna add them right now, because I'm just gonna say console.log new, aster new asteroids. Um, <laughs> I'm getting some nice messages of tips in my chat. Okay, so, um, so I just wanna see, okay, it's gone. And, I got, and I'm seeing two new in the console. So that's a good sign. So I'm seeing two new asteroids. And so I should be able to add those now, but there's a problem. When I add them, the laser is going to be right there. And it's gonna be intersecting with those two new, and then it's gonna add two more. So I'm gonna get stuck. The reason why I commented that out is I could see this like recursive loop happening where laser hits asteroid, laser hits asteroid, laser hits asteroid, and it's gonna go crazy. So fortunately, what I need to do here is also loop through the lasers backwards. Uh, I minus minus. And then I also need to say lasers dot splice I comma one. Right? I want to remove that one laser. So let's see if that works now. Oops. Okay. Cannot read property hits of undefined. So I think this is not working properly. Oh, I forgot to push them in. No? Uh, where did that happen? Oh, so many bugs. Sketch.js line 26. So my asteroids are undefined for, oh, the lasers are undefined for whatever reason because I'm removing it and, oh, oh, look at this. You know what? This is kind of unbelievable, but there's a problem here where I need to just break out of this loop. I'm done with that laser. So I, I, so I need to just hit uh, break because I think uh, I'm going back and checking things that don't exist anymore. Let's try that. <laughs> yes, there we go. So now you can see the laser and the asteroid goes away and now I should be able to push. But okay, so I thought of that in my head and you might be wondering, what did I just do? The problem is I'm saying lasers index I and then I delete that laser immediately. But I'm still in this loop because there's a bunch of asteroids that I'm checking for each laser. So I need to make sure I like get out of that asteroids loop because I'm, I'm done immediately. So break will do that for me. I hope that makes sense. Um, so now I should be able to say asteroids push new asteroids. And we should see, uh, asteroids.indexI.render is not a function. Uh, okay, so I removed the asteroids and uh, and I was, which loop am I breaking out of? I'm breaking out of, so let's look at the asteroids array and see what it looks like. And I need to have a bit more room here. Okay, oh, look at this. So it doesn't do what I thought it would do. I just thought if I called push and gave it an array, it would add both of them to the array. But it doesn't actually do that. It added a fourth element, which is an array, which is two. So how do I add an array? I thought push would do that, but I guess it doesn't. Concatenate. It's, there's like a concatenate two arrays together function, right? Uh, JavaScript concatenate two arrays. I could also just write my own little loop concat method. So concat takes one array and concats it with the other one. Uh, okay, so what I want to do, this should work. 
Um, I should be able to say instead of push, asteroids equals asteroids dot concat the new asteroids. So merge those two arrays together. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, here we go. Let's see how if I get this to work. All right, now it's splitting apart. Now here's the thing. In addition to having them split apart, um, they should get smaller. So uh, what I want to do is in the asteroids, I should also optionally receive an R value. And I should say if R, and let's just um, have it always be divided by 2. So times 0 0.5, whoops, I lost what I had there. So if it's not receiving an R value, it's a random value. If it is, I get R times 0 0.5. So now they should be getting smaller each time. Whoops, that didn't look like that worked. I can't tell. <laughs> this is a big one. Oh, you know what it is? Here's the other thing. Oh, the offsets. The offsets are always between negative 15 and 15. They really should be a function of the r itself. It should be between negative this dot r and, uh, and positive this dot r. So like the offset may be uh, also uh, times 0.5. So it can't, uh, so the offset, should, because as they get smaller, the offset shouldn't be as much. I should probably just use scale. <laughs> Why are they not getting much smaller? Let's see. Oh, that seemed to work. Uh, what am I missing here? Uh, OK. Oh, I need to <laughs> I forgot to add it. So I didn't actually pass in the, ver the value. So when I make the two at new asteroids, not only do I need, you can't just like put something there and then forget to call it, as I seem to do a lot. This dot r, this dot r. Do this for the, this one. So I don't, know, I don't know if anyone's still watching this. But this.r, this.r. OK. So now that should get me what I want, which is, there we go. They're smaller. Look at that. Each time I hit them, they're smaller. Now, I could also copy the offsets so the shapes are exactly the same. But this is sort of close enough for me. Um, the other thing is, once they get to a certain size, they should just be removed. So uh, another thing that I should do is in sketch.js, is I should have some sort of threshold. And I should say, as long as asteroids index j dot r is greater than, what's a good r? Let's say uh, 10. As long as it's greater than 10, then you can do all this breaking up stuff. Otherwise, increase the score. You know, Otherwise, do nothing. Uh, increase the score. So I'm still always going to remove the asteroid and the laser, but I only want to like double it if there are, actually I should always be increasing the score. Because, so whatever. Um, so I only want to do that if the asteroids are greater than 10. So now let's try to play this a little bit. Hmm. 10 is really small. But you can see they're gone after a certain amount. Oh, look at this, ah! I'm getting distracted by playing this game. Okay, this is totally fun. OK, I think basically I've done everything now except for one thing. I should probably add something where you d die. Well, maybe not die. You just start over, do something different if the ship hits the asteroids. And this will be the last feature that I'm going to add in this coding challenge. OK, so now what I need is somewhere out here in the asteroids loop, I could say if ship dot hits asteroids index i, then uh, I'm just going to add a console.log. Uh, I'm just going to add a console.log because I'm feeling tired. This will be an exercise. Console.log, uh, uh, oops. So I need to now add a function in ship, which says this dot hits equals a function, which expects an asteroid. And I can also calculate the distance again between this.pos.x, this.pos.y, asteroid.pos.x, asteroid.pos.y. And now um, 
Now, um, if d is less than, uh, I'm, I'm like losing my mind here, this dot r, right, plus uh, asteroid dot r. So I'll, I'll just add the two like side, you know, one's a triangle, one's a strange polygon. This isn't exactly right, but it's pretty close. I'm going to say return true, otherwise return false. And now, here we go. Uh, let's just see. We're going to look in the, uh, in the console if I die. Let's see if I can win this game. I should probably test it sooner than later. <laughs> but I haven't died yet. Oh, OK, I, I'm getting hit. So you can see that I'm getting hit. So I've got something close enough. I could change. I should actually probably like draw, change its color or something so we could sort of see some visual feedback. But this is the basic game mechanic. So remember, here, there, I did it. <laughs> Coding challenge programmed uh, asteroids in JavaScript using the P5.js framework um, uh, in the browser. I would love it if anybody uh, takes this game. The code for this will be on GitHub. And I hope I might try to make a code pen out of it as well. So look in this video's description. You can find the code, play with it, tweet me a revision, um, add stuff for me. Like what I need to do now, because this, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, um, this Asteroids game is part one of a collaboration with Siraj. Siraj has a YouTube channel who, and makes uh, videos about machine learning. And I'm going to pass this game off to him, and he's going to train a bot to play it and get a super high score. So the bot's going to learn how to turn the ship, push it, shoot, um, you know, destroy all the asteroids. So I need to add really just like a score mechanism and a lives, lives mechanism. So if anybody wants to volunteer to do that, um, you, can, you can fork its code on GitHub, um, make some variations on it, and uh, I'll pass that off to Siraj, and I'll see you in another coding challenge. Um, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. I forgot something. Uh, in the Patreon chat on Slack, somebody points out my lasers array is getting just bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This is a definite problem. So I do need to do something which also says, <laughs> this video's not over. You thought it was over. Uh, I really should add something that says, if lasers index i off screen, then also laser splice i index 1. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, I think if I just do that here, that should be OK. But if I've already removed it here, that's fine. I'm just checking the next one. That's fine, uh, I think. <laughs> we'll see. So I'm gonna, now I need to add a function. And it's actually very similar to the edges function. So I'm going to look for like one of the edges function in like um, ship. And I'm going to go into laser. And I'm going to say uh, this off screen equals function. If pause.x is great, and I don't need any of this, this dot r, r stuff, just if it's greater than width, this is probably more trouble than it's worth, less than zero. Uh, if it's greater than height, or less than zero. If any of these are true, and I can put these together in an or, which maybe I'll do here. So or this, uh, return true. Uh, if it's either one of these, this is a really ridiculous way I'm writing this, then also return true. Otherwise, da, 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 return false. So let's now look at um, what I want to do now just to see that this is working is I want to console log lasers.length to see if that array is growing or shrinking. Um, so, and also, I think I have some extra weird console log somewhere, but that's fine. So we should see there's zero lasers right now. And does it go get back to zero? Yeah, now it's back to zero. So you can see this is working. Great. So now that laser array, oops, uh, off screen of undefined. Ah, uh, <laughs> sketch.js line 39. Um, so, ah, if it doesn't exist, because it possibly could have been removed here. Mm. This is, this is a, uh, uh, oh, you know what I can just do is here. And then I can break. So if it's off screen, no, no, that's, 
go to the next one. Don't bother. Otherwise, th there's got to be a better way to write this. <laughs> this, is like the, this is like an hour into this video. Ah, nobody's watching this anyway anymore. Um, so I, I got to think of a better way to do this, but my brain has melted. But so what I'm doing is I'm saying, if it's off the screen, get rid of it. Otherwise, you can start to check at it, check, check against all these asteroids. And that should fix that problem. And I don't know why my iTunes opened. People are going to start complaining now that I'm using a Mac. I get that, I get that complaint a lot. So now I should be able to say, uh, you know, th the lasers are now, the array is not, uh, I'm trying to win this game. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't need to watch me play this game anymore. I'll play it on my own time. Thanks for watching this coding challenge. Go and watch, as soon as it's available, there'll be a, a link in this video's description to Siraj's video where he trains a bot to play this game. I'm super excited to see how that works and what happens, and I hope to see you back in another video sometime soon. Thanks again.